Good afternoon. Appreciate everybody being here today. I uh, want to uh, first say good luck to the Mountaineers tonight. Sean Clark, as they play Louisiana Lafayette on Tuesday night. No, that's a big game. So good luck to the Mountaineers tonight and Coach Clark and that team. Um, you know, after reviewing the game film, I uh, was really proud of the way our guys competed. I thought we uh, – there was people questioning, and obviously on film, we questioned some of the effort in the previous week, and so we wanted to get that off the tape. We wanted to take that off the tape, and I think we, we absolutely did that. Um, really proud of the way the defensive line uh, and Al Davis um, really stepped up. I thought the D-line D was very disruptive, uh, did a tremendous job um, with negative yardage plays, gap control, sacks. Was it perfect? No way. Um, never going to get to the perfect game, but you're always striving for it. So really proud of those guys. Um, and then obviously there's always things that you, you, you've got to improve on. Uh, you know, cannot give up 21 points in the fourth quarter, period. Um, and with eight minutes left to go in the game, uh, you know, gave up 21 points and, and, and really kind of uh, left us some things to fix. And so spent a lot of Sunday and yesterday making sure we're, we're getting those things corrected. We'll work on that today. Um, but have shifted our focus to a really good Texas A&M football team. Um, obviously uh, have a lot of respect uh, for their head football coach and Coach Fisher. I think one of only, you know, well, there's three coaches in our league that won a national championship. Obviously he's one of them. Um, does a great job building a program, a uh, tremendous job at running an offense uh, as the play caller and the head football coach. Um, has total control of, of operating the game and, and does a, a really good job. Coaches quarterbacks at a high level, as you can see, with the way that his quarterback has progressed. Um, you know, defensively, um, I've never seen so many single digits on one side of the ball before, which especially when they're on the D-line usually is an issue because that means they're really good players. Um, Coach Elko does a really good job, but they've got really good talent on both sides. Uh, of the ball and it's been a process for them to get there and they're capitalizing on it. I know they've had a few injuries but uh, those guys have now settled into their positions and they're playing at a high level. Obviously that's what you have to do in order to beat the number one team in the country. Um, you know very talented running backs, two guys that uh, world-class speed and vision, both guys will be Sunday players. Um, and something that we're going to have to contend with. They're tied in as a big, big man, big human uh, who's always open. Um, and then they've got some really good wide receivers. So hands are, are we've got our, definitely got our hands full this week. Uh, it's a great opportunity for our football team. It's a great opportunity for our football team to see where we're at, um, to get an opportunity to play this team at home in front of our environment, in front of our fans, uh, with great energy and enthusiasm for the opportunity. Uh, so we'll, we're, we're going to be ready to play Saturday and look forward to the challenge that it presents. With that, I'll open up for questions. Can you point to, uh, you know, with your own team, kind of a &M season up until last week probably hadn't been what they wanted to, and then that happened just to – do you use other teams like that as kind of examples of how much things can change week to week? Yes and no. I, I try not to get into the – ebbs and flows or comparisons like again the process is is we've got to try to be one and oh this week we have got to be try to be one and oh this week and you can't get up and down because of every different thing that happens obviously our our uh season uh has had some ups and downs but we got to try to maintain even keel uh you, you can't get too high or too low you can't get into those emotional swings and so i'm not trying to compare ourselves to anybody else or say well we can be like them like we just need to be the best version of Mizzou that we can be. Uh, we're all going to want to win Saturday. Do we want to win today at practice? Do we want to win in meetings today? Do we show the effort that it's going to take in the meetings and at practice in order to execute and play well on Saturday? And that's what we have to control each week, each day, each practice. And that's the message that I've got to continue to preach at, for this program to continue to lay the foundation for what we're going to be. We may not be there today. Um, we're trying to get there today. But that's what we've got to do consistently in order to be uh, that kind of team, to be a contender. I mean, <laughs> football will humble you. I mean, if you don't believe me, there's – I mean, I'm not going to point anybody else out who's struggling, but there's other teams within the state that aren't exactly playing out the way they want to be playing either right now. Like, that's, that's football. That's life. 
it's how do you respond to those things, not comparing yourself to other people. How do you respond? Coach, kind of on that, on that subject, how have you seen your guys respond in the last week to, you know, throwing out the depth chart or getting you know, the assists on the competition and that stuff? I mean, I think the proof's in the, in the film. Like, how did y'all think they responded? How did you, what, what did you think the vibe was when they played? Like, Tyler Beatty's run in the third quarter was as strong a run as I've seen a running back have in a long time. That's heart. That's heart. Yes, he's got talent, but that's an undeniability. Like, I'm not going to be tackled on this play. Uh, the second drive of the game, you know, we have a we check to an outside zone, uh, and Javon Foster throws the defensive end out of the club, man. Like, he could have worked at Willie's. Like, it was incredible. Um, like, that's undeniable effort. You know, Trajan Jeffcoat on the first interception is trying to get underneath the, 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 the we call it a back block. He's got, to, he's got to be in underneath that, and then he's got to stick his foot in the ground and go chase the quarterback, gets a dive on him, the quarterback throws it, KAD makes the play. Like, that's effort. That's, that's all on that person to play that way. Um, and really, you know, the same thing with um, the interception. You know, the play's going away. He's still working the tackle upfield, sees the ball up, tips it. Makai Wingo, the only reason he gets that pick was because when he sees the ball thrown, our D-line is supposed to turn and chase the football. And he turned and chased the football, and the ball's up in the air, and he catches it. So to me, like, that's the response. That's what you have to have. Was it perfect? No. Believe me, I got plenty of DMs and all that mentions that it's not perfect. I get it. Okay, I get it. We want it to be perfect. We'll get there. We'll get there. But what was good was the effort we played with, was the mentality that we had. We were ready to go when the ball was kicked. Um, so that's a start. And now we got to build on that. Kind of going off that, coach. Just after what happened against Tennessee, how much is this group motivated to get another chance against an SEC group? Yeah, I don't, I don't talk about that previous game. Like I ain't worried about that previous game. Like that, that's in the past. I can't do anything about that. All I can control is the future, and all I can control is today's practice. How are we going to practice today? What is your desire to practice today? Um, and what's your standard? Like, what, what are you willing to live with? When you look at yourself in the mirror tonight, when you lay yourself down in bed, what's your standard? What are you, what are you okay with? And that's, that's what we're asking ourselves right now. Um, I'm not bringing up the past. Like, it happened. Move on. You can't, you can't keep crying over spilled milk. Eli, at the midway point of the season, are yeah. there things you could touch on and say these are this team's strengths and you feel like an identity is, is here now? Um, you know, I, I think, yeah, I think there's some strengths on the football team. Uh, really, next week in the bye week is when you're going to have a chance to really self-scout and see. But from us schematically, I think I know what our strengths are. I think as a football team, I know what we need to play to. Um, I think there's a few things that we're still trying to decide. Is that really what we're good at or not? Um, but I, I think we're working towards it. As you go through a season, does that help you then kind of? Yeah. Well, it helps you strategize how do you win each game. That's why I'm trying to be coy about it because I think you have to figure out what your strengths are and then play to it in each game so that you give yourself the best chance to win. Um, you can't you can't be somebody you're not. So. Yeah, when you have somebody who's playing the level of a Tyler Beatty, do you try and hope his production can open up other parts of the offense? Like, you know, they'd be able to sell him hard so wide receivers can get, you know, some more time you know, in that way as well? Yeah, absolutely. I think you have to prepare in a way that allows him to do what he does best, find creative ways to get him the ball so that he can make plays um, and spark your football team, but then also take advantage of, with all the eyes on him, how do we you know, do something else to attack the defense. You touched on Texas A&M's defensive front. What, what kind of a challenge for their, their Wow. Um, they're, they're big. Um, they've got uh, experience. Uh, I think, you know, if, if I'm right, the only one that's fairly new is, is Michael Clemens, number two. But, but um, I mean, all of them played last year a significant amount of time. Um, they, they all are physical and big. Um, they all have quick twitch, can bull rush, can throw people off. Um, they keep their linebackers clean. They allow their safeties to play deep so that they don't have to be fitting in the run. Um, you know, Coach Elko does a really good job of creating 
uh, one-on-one -on -one matchups in the in, in his pressures. Uh, it's not so much overload pressures. It's the ability to create, you know, put people on islands and, and make those rushes one-on-one, -on -one, and that that becomes a challenge. So, um, you know, each player is going to have to really work hard this week on their technique and fundamentals, and, and have a great focus and and uh, trust the scheme and and be able to play fast. Yeah, kind of as a follow-up on that, I mean, what, what have you seen from your own offensive line, I guess, over the past couple weeks? Obviously, something had to have gone fairly right to rush for 300 yards, but I know Connor's been under pressure a little bit more the past couple weeks. Just, I guess, where do you feel like they're at? Yeah, I mean, I think um, we've, we've kind of had some rotational stuff that's maybe thrown off a little bit of our chemistry and communication and some of our protections. Um, but I think from a mentality standpoint, we've had the right mentality. Um, we're, we're trying to play physical. I think there's always things in the game that you go back and say, this is something we've got to improve on. Um, and I think there's a couple of runs there that, that uh, in the third quarter that we're, you know, we're uh, disappointed that we're not executing better versus movement. But, you know, again, we're, we're, we're continuing to be a work in progress, and, and those guys are working really hard. With the position group dinners you guys had last week, was that kind of something special, and how do you think that kind of helped bring the team uh, kind of recharge everyone and refocus? Um, I mean, it's not necessarily anything something special. It's just something intentional, um, and it's just something that, you know, we've got to continue to do to build that connection and camaraderie amongst our football team um, to make sure that uh, – we understand the importance of playing for each other and not necessarily just with each other. Was that something that you guys had been doing previously in the season or was that kind of something you were asking? We've been doing it. We just, I think sometimes you get into a season and you forget some of the stuff that, some of the things that you need to be doing. And so it was just a, a reminder of sometimes you just got to get back to the basics. You know, back to the blocking. I know you mentioned perimeter blocking being an issue at times the week before. Um, do you see, it, especially with some of these jet sweeps and screens, do you see being close and to break in some of those? And how much of an issue has perimeter blocking been just it, overall? Um, well, it was an issue a couple weeks ago because of the holding penalties. Um, you know, last week we had a jet that, that would have scored, um, but it was a, a legal motion. We got to make sure the formation's set. And that's pre-snap penalty on the quarterback. Um, you know, and, and even on Dawson Downing's long run and on Tyler Beatty's uh, first long run, Toski and Mookie Cooper had blocks on safeties and corners that freed everybody. So the the willingness to do it is is there. It's just a matter of making sure that we're consistent in it. I think D-linemen are naturally confident. So I don't think there was a renewed sense of confidence. I just think there's um, there's a, a connection. You know, this, this league is always good. It seems like maybe more parity this year. Could it be that the transfer portal could it be the super seniors? I mean, is there anything to it? That maybe there's just four really good teams? I think this league's always been really good. It's yeah. It's been fairly competitive uh, in – um, I mean, top to bottom, I think it's a competitive league. Uh, we all recruit at a really high level, and we recruit good players, and we've got coaches who develop. And, yeah, I think, you know, when you look at what Coach Stoops has done this year at Kentucky and being able to get maybe four, I don't know the number off the top of my head, four or five starters, legit contributors that are helping his team win games, like that's a difference because that's you know normally you're you're developing somebody and and seeing if those guys can plug holes and they plugged in five guys who are legitimate starters who were starters at you know or significant contributors at their previous schools. I mean I think uh, number one was obviously a very good player at his previous school. The left tackle was a very good player at his previous school. The linebacker was a very good player at his previous school. So you know that's a that's a significant. Um, push, which is going to be, uh, you know, make parity, I think, a lot more interesting moving forward. In terms of the transfer portal, Chuck Hicks being eligible, yeah. kind of your plan in terms of integrating him with the team? Well, he's been integrated with the team. We just, he's been taking a lot of scout team reps because we weren't sure, but now he's, 
Uh, again, there's no depth chart. It's who produces the best in practice. We're going to get him up to speed as quick as we can. He's been getting reps with the threes in, in, in special team phases, and now he's, you know, whatever opportunities he can earn for himself. Uh, I mean, just because he transferred here doesn't mean he's going to play. It's what opportunities can he earn for himself with his production, his practice habits, his technique, his detail, his effort. Um, and, and that's really what we're going to ask of everybody uh, on in all three phases every day. Like, what do you earn um, and what do you provide our football team with a chance to win on Saturday? What have you thought of how he performed with the scout team so far? Yeah, I mean, he was scout team player of the week two weeks ago. I think he, uh, he's got good movement skills. and. But now we'll get to see when he actually has to execute a call and make sure it's, you know, he's not reading a card. He's having to execute a call based off um, knowing the defense. I know going back to preseason, everybody talked about the, the hope that you'd be able to get a little bit more downfield passing this year. What, halfway through, kind of what's your assessment of, of how that's been so far? Um. You know, I think we've had opportunities in every game except for maybe um, Kentucky, uh, just based on the style of defense that they played. We still took a couple of shots over the top and missed. Had one late in the game there. Um, but I think we've we've tried. Um, I think we've got to continue to, to take what the defense gives us, and if they allow that opportunity, I don't think it's a – a scheme issue or necessarily a player issue. I think it's just got to we got to continue to execute. But we, you know, obviously we hit JJ last week. Uh, um, you know, Tennessee we really didn't hit any explosive plays and missed in the past game. But the previous week I thought we did against uh, you know, BC was a little bit of a, a different style of defense too, a little bit more similar to Kentucky. But I think we've hit deep balls. I haven't gone into it and said, boy, we're just we're not an explosive enough offense. As an offensive coordinator, do you have a number of whether it's shots you want to take or you know big big plays you target every game, and does that change depending on obviously what defense you face? No, we have a specific category that we carry into each number of game um, that we're trying to get. We're trying to create ten explosives a game. Um, and, and so you're going to have to – some of those create naturally through run game, but some of them are created through whatever schematics you may be able to try to, to create. What's explosive? Center bar or how do you define 12 plus run, 16 plus pass. So we're trying to create 10 of those a game. I, I, this is not an analytics deal, but the number one indicator, in, in my opinion, in, in uh, wins and losses is actually not turnovers, it's explosive plays. Whoever wins the explosive play battle wins the game usually in the upper 70s, low 80 percent, depending on what you know what analytical statistics you use. Um, that's actually number one in Division One football. That's actually number one. Number two is turnovers, and then you get into sacks, negative yardage plays. I think uh, Tyler Beatty is an extremely competitive person, and he just has been really working hard to capitalize on his opportunity. Um, I think it's just a different mindset when you know somebody else is going to get this rep and you may get these reps, but now they're all yours, and he has changed his body. He's put in extra effort. He is taking care of his body. He recovers. Um, he studies tape. He... Uh, minds his business, you know, on and off the football field. He's an incredible student um, athlete. And so I think he's a great representation of what a student athlete should be and when you're given an opportunity, how you take advantage of it. Speaking in the backfield, what did you see from B.J. Harris to give him a little bit larger role last week and how did you assess his performance? Yeah, so Mike actually uh, tweaked his hamstring and so we were going to go into the game with a little bit more of a Michael Cox rotation but just didn't feel like that that was fair to him um, and so you know BJ's been a guy that we've been playing a little bit and he's been continually impressing in practice and so we needed somebody else to, to take some of that load and I thought he ran really well I thought he had some good short area quickness and burst um, did a nice job covering the football um, and uh, opportunities continue to grow. We've got to improve in our protection pickups. Uh, that's really for him something that he's got to work on. 
to make sure that we can protect the quarterback and, and, and face up blitzes um, and know who, who he has, has to pick up. Um, but that's, that's why you play the game, so you can make mistakes, correct, and, and, and learn. After watching the game, did you think playing uh, Chad Bailey more was, was it positive for the I thought it was a, a big positive. I thought he played well, answered the bell. Again, not perfect, had a couple of MAs, had, had a couple of things that, that um, got to improve on. But I thought he was more downhill. I thought he was physical. I thought he was you know, trying to take away yardage from the offense. Um, when you play at a linebacker depth at five yards, you, you cannot be making contact with blocks at five yards. You have to be constantly taking ground from the offense. And he was able to do that. And, it, um, you know, again, some of his angles on his fits and, and, and some of the angles are, are going to have to continue to improve and be tighter. Um, but I thought he played uh, – I thought he played well. I, th I think he's got room for growth, but I was pleased with his performance.